This is going to be a behind the scenes video for one of the coolest shoots I've ever gotten to do. This production took place late 2023 over the course of four days. Being an automotive filmmaker, one of the biggest things you could look forward to in life and in your career is a giant brand that you've known for forever or become familiar with choosing to work with you or asking to work with you. That company is Sunoco. We've done some work with Sunoco in the past, but last year they reached back out and wanted to do something new. They said, find some cool cars, find some cool locations, and just do what you do. Film some really cool stuff that we could put together to make for an awesome edit. Before any of this footage that you're about to see in this behind the scenes video went down, hours and hours were spent finding different locations, zooming in and out on Google Maps, getting in touch with different owners of different vehicles, trying to figure out who was available when to make this shoot happen very last minute and with a very crunched timeline. Visiting multiple different updated locations around the greater DFW area to figure out which location had the best lighting, which location we wanted to put each vehicle at. So many different logistics were figured out ahead of time before any of these scenes were actually shot in this video. And I wanna thank my crew that you'll see in this video for helping make that happen. There wasn't a ton of time for us to properly record some behind the scenes. So I'll fill in with some voiceover throughout this video to help explain what we were doing and why. But enjoy this behind the scenes video on how we created some amazing, unique content for a worldwide known brand in Sunoco. That. BMW fly by one. Okay, I was staying by you right now, let's, let's Since most of our shooting was going to happen at night, I went ahead and rented some Atlas anamorphic glass. Oh yeah, we got it. It'll be fine. All right, all in, ready for each go. night's <laughs> shoot, we created a shot list to know exactly what we wanted to get done. Knowing we were going to be on a very tight schedule and going late into each night, this was completely necessary. Sunoco shoot. It's our first scene. We're only running an hour and a half behind to do dusk, and we have about 30 minutes of sunlight, 20 minutes of sunlight left. We have a bunch of shots to get. We're gonna try to squeeze in as many as we can. It's probably like 20 minutes to the next spot anyway, so this should be interesting. But we have a, uh, yeah, first shoot of many, so it should be cool. All right, come on down. Now we did that shot three separate times because each time I tried to add a different amount of handheld shake to the camera and pan at the car at the same time as keeping the car within the entire frame the whole time. Those first two takes, I realized I wasn't accomplishing that. So for the third take, I did a little less shake and made sure the car was in the frame the whole time. And to me, that was the best one. So we moved on after that to get the 180 of that in which we just put the camera on the camera arm in front of the car and slowly reversed backwards the opposite direction of the car to get this shot. And together, they look like this. I wanted a good combination of rough and aggressive handheld rolling footage mixed with some smooth cinematic rolling footage as well to deliver to the client. So we plan to do all of our forward facing shots, all of our chase shots on the gimbal and all of our rear shots handheld at the trunk. On this first shoot, for some reason, my monitor feed wasn't working correctly, so I had to look over the shoulder of Trey, who was pulling focus in the front seat and work off of his monitor. And then the battery came out.
See us? There you go. Yep. This shot here I had intended to be done with a little bit more light and see the car through the trees with a longer lens, but we ran out of light and ran out of time, so we just got what we could. Kind of heavy, is it? No. Okay, we're holding hands. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> What we were trying to do here was throw up a little bit of extra dust for atmosphere with the leaf blower and we only realized later that we should have been blowing from a different direction because all that dust just kept going backwards in the wind. Yeah, we were kind of rushed so we didn't really notice that. But the shot we got overall looked pretty cool. Check it out. Trey, what are we doing right now? Filling a gas station. <laughs> we gotta make sure it looks good for this video. You see like all that ink in there, we wanna get rid of that real quick. There's like all this dust up here. We don't wanna see any of that. This is gonna be for like a commercial. We wanna make it look as good as possible. We're gonna finish cleaning up this gas pump right here because this is where we're gonna be filming at. And they're filming, or they're cleaning the car today because it got a little dusty. Um, then we're gonna grab some B-roll of the station, get the car pulling in, some details of the car here at the station, fueling up with that new 94 uh, from uh, Sunoco. Right, let's keep cleaning. Okay, we're good. We're here. Just for chill. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one. Cool. Trey, can I give you the camera? Maybe. Or Max? You. <laughs> <laughs> Here we're using the Lava Pro Blends that we also rented for this production uh, to get some really cool detailed close-up shots of headlights. We use this for stitching and some other shots that you'll see in the video. Next up here, we're using the Nanlite Pavotube 2 30X. This is their four foot version one, which has the cool new pixel effects, which allows us to do this cool like driving past light sequence here that we're using to mimic some driving shots here while the car is just parked. Uh, with a little bit of post shake and some effects added onto this later, you would never be able to tell that it wasn't done while driving. For this next set of rollers here, we went ahead and shut down this bridge over in Fort Worth. Just kidding, we didn't have that kind of money. We just were doing this at like 3 a.m. so there's no one out there. But we got these really cool shots going over this bridge, getting some hand on flyby shots and some camera car shots as well to mix in with the footage. It's 1.35 in the morning and we wrapped the first of three cars right here, Duncan's M3 comp of the Sunoco shoot. Um, we're in Fort Worth, we came to get some few night rollers or a few bridges because we weren't able to get some of the shots we wanted on our shot list during dusk because we ran out of sunlight. So we supplemented with some bridge lit up cool rollers, some handheld, some on the arm to uh, get some action and then smooth. Uh, a really long overall day, um, longer than we wanted to go, but that's what usually happens, so we're used to it. Obviously, you shout out to Eric, Trey, and Max for helping, and Duncan for bringing out his car for the shoot. Eric's taking off our black plate and putting back on the owner's plate there. Um, now we need to do all of this all over again for the next two days, well, three days, with another car and B-roll, and I gotta clean this up before that and uh, figure out some issues, figure out some kinks, or uh, whatever you wanna call it, and recharge everything and come up with the storyboards and shot list for the next two days, but otherwise, we got some great shots, got some really cool stuff, 
and let's cut to our next day, which is B-roll day tomorrow, or let's just cut to the next car, which is Sunday. We have this cut stoop. That's what, that's what you guys are going to see next. Night number two here at Sunoco, cleaning up the stations that we're shooting using some Meguiars, of course. Come on now. Clean everything up here. Just make sure it looks good for the shots. It's a pretty empty station again. It's only like 8 o'clock, though. So, Trey's over there getting some B-roll. Tonight we're just doing B-roll. No cars today, so not too much exciting stuff here, but this is night two of the Sunoco stuff doing a time lapse here and sending the van around so we get the headlights and the taillights to kind of circle the station um, to mimic some stuff that the client sent us that they might like. We're doing some frame summing here, and uh, frame processing um, to get like a long exposure time lapse here on the red. Because in theory, if you do like a, a regular time lapse, you're only gonna do one frame per second. And it's gonna be a little choppy. So frame summing or frame averaging, we're doing something right now will help us achieve like a motion blurry effect. You can kind of see it here happening in real time as the lights go see it there but hopefully this will play out as more uh, motion blurry than not when it's played back at full speed but the only downside to this is this will take a long time So the goal of this night was to visit all the stations we'd be shooting throughout this week and get b-roll of all of them so that way when we shot each vehicle at each location we wouldn't have to waste time getting general b-roll. We would spend this one night dedicated to solely all the b-roll footage. Yeah we shot that one clip you guys saw at the Sunoco earlier and we did a whole bunch of b-roll. It's now um, 3 a.m. You guys didn't see any of that. Sorry. Great job boys. Moving on to tomorrow. <laughs> we started this next day shoot a little bit earlier to get this one shot we had in mind using the probe lens. Now this shot would mimic some internal combustion happenings within a motor, within an engine, to kind of give us a, a quick cut that could be between other footage. So let's say if a car floors it, we cut to this shot for like a second or two, a split second or two even. All this set up in this flames and this little contraption we made out of two by fours and this speed rail for you know what is probably gonna be a half a second in the overall video. We've seen this done before. Anthony Halcyon did this in one of his videos before, so we uh, asked him for some tips and we went ahead and did not burn down Trey's apartment. All right, we're here at night number three. It is 8.27. Uh, we're at our next Sunoco here. We just finished cleaning off this pump. We have Brent's Supra that we're filming with tonight, uh, his white MK5 Supra. We filmed with his MK4 for Death of Thieves. Um, he also has a Viper and uh, 240 and some other cool cars as well. Um, but we're going to get our first establishing shots here at the pump. Um, of him pulling up from the street from a few different angles, do all of our fake pump shots, and then go do some cool rollers, which we'll try to get some BTS of. Um, hopefully, we got the movie with the Atlas on here again today. Um, we're going to try to get a shot with the Noto wheels as well for some shake but we'll get to that when we get there. But we're gonna move the van and just uh, blow off this area a little bit. Of course, you guys know we bring out the Rio V. Oh, shit. That tanker truck you saw come in at the last second of that clip was coming in to refill that gas station. So we actually had to stop doing all of our gas station shots and just move on to some of our rollers and we would come back to the station later. For this 
next shot, you know we had to hit a classic Reggie Ma split. This shot was planned to be a simple parallel drive-by underneath this cool building entrance. Ideally, we'd have those cars parked there, but it is what it is. This this shot probably won't make the final cut. I don't, uh... I'm coming. All right, here we go. I'm coming, I'm coming. You guys can see the intersection, right? Yep, yep, you're good, you're good. No one's out here? All right, here we go. There we go. I'm coming. This next shot here is something similar we did for a video in the past. We really liked it. So we mimicked it in a few different styles where the picture car is coming racing towards us while we're racing at it as well through an intersection from a tunnel. But this time we're using the Noto wheels to control the camera and to add a little bit of shake in camera uh, instead of having to add it in post. So I've had these Noto wheels or these inertia wheels by Noto uh, for a minute, but I haven't been able to really use them for any shoot. Um, and I haven't really honestly gotten that well at using them yet. What I just did is I pretty much use them for their built-in effect of the shake that allows the Moby Pro to do, which is probably the main reason uh, why I wanted to work with Noto and why I wanted to get my hands on these wheels is the shake that these wheels allow the Moby to uh, do. It really puts um, a really cool action shake. So what the clip we just filmed at was uh, with a 90 degree shutter angle and the effect shake turned all the way up on the, on the wheels and a slow um, pan towards our car. And I think it looked really, really cool. And that's an effect, sure you could do that in post. Uh, we went through that tunnel right over there. Sure you could do that in post, but it's not gonna look as good as when you do it practical. So I think that's probably one of the coolest things about Noto, and I think they're working on adding other effects like that. Um, these are the inertia wheels. Eventually I will have a review on these and I'll get better at using the wheels themselves. Um, it's just taking a lot of practice to be able to learn how to do this because one does pan, one does tilt, and you need to do a kind of a posing. Um, the joystick on the movie controller is really easy, but it's um, not as precise as the wheels and it doesn't have effects like that built in. Um, so hopefully you guys will see more of me using these wheels. Too much dust on the road. Max is cleaning it up. Boys are getting the camera off. We just got some really cool rollers over the iconic Margaret whatever bridge and under the tunnel. Uh, we're pretty much good on Moby, so we're taking Moby off. Um, we have audio and suction cup and our gas station shots to do, so we're just gonna knock out audio and suction cup in the same run on our way back to the gas station. Um, so things are going well. A little bit earlier so far than the previous nights. It's only 12.20. <laughs> This will be Toyota Supra. Toyota Supra for uh, Sunoco, uh, Brent. Give me a quick detail about the car, like engine or turbo. Garrett Turbo, B58, Ford injection, 
fuel system stuff, goodies, all type of jazz. E85 fuel as well. Uh, okay, so can you give me um, a small, medium, large rev? Vroom, vroom, vroom. Komodo here, suction cup. We should have a little safety cable there, but I don't have it. So we're just doing this real quick. <laughs> um, I'm gonna be in the car watching it. It's gonna get this shot of the wheel with um, this one exit of a tunnel we're gonna get. That's gonna look really cool, hopefully. You guys can kind of see the screen. It's up there. I'm using the red app to monitor, but here goes nothing. Okay, everybody's safe, everybody's secure. Look at this baby, it ain't going nowhere. back at the gas station here getting our gas station shots because we couldn't before because there's a tanker truck filling up um, but look at this blue reflection on this white this is looking sick the shadow it's giving and these like little reflections coming off the car are gonna look really cool for these detail shots um, but right now we're just getting our gas pump shots that we need showing the 94 showing him opening the tank putting the fuel pump in that stuff then we'll do our beauty shots our fake tack rev our fake shifting our little shot list here is getting mixed up pretty quickly and that's where we stopped filming BTS again. Uh, sorry about that, but it was already about like 2 or 3 a.m. and we wanted to get home and wanted to get the owner home as well. So we're moving on to the next day, which is this Challenger shoot we did more north of Texas towards Plano, um, starting in a garage to get the wake up kind of scene, using again the Noto wheels here where you could see the shake happening from. Uh, I controlled the Movi while Max controlled the Noto wheels for their shake. And uh, we got this cool shot and then went in to do some of our rollers. <laughs> For this next cool specialty shot, we knew of this dirt end road that kind of met up with the actual road in which we wanted the Challenger to peel out from and merge its way onto the regular road that we could get multiple shots out of to kind of sell that aggressive launch uh, style, aggressive look and feel to the video for. Again, probably just a clip that's gonna be half a second, a full second in the overall video, but for all this setup and multiple takes and suction cup and all that jazz, I think it'll be worth it. All right, no cars? All right. And three, two, one, go. Get it. This next spot I found on Google Maps looked like to be some sort of crossover where there was two lanes, they're going opposite directions, but late at night, they're both probably empty. The idea here was to have the camera car go down one lane while the picture car goes down the other lane and we meet up here at the end. It kind of worked out. If anything, this will be used for maybe just the split part of the shot. Otherwise, this shot went on for a little bit longer than I wanted it to and the lights that cast the van shadow onto the grass kind of killed some of these shots.
And I think what we did for this next shot is pretty self-explanatory and probably one of the more badass shots that we got out of this whole shoot. Yeah, bro, magical, bro. That shit was crazy. They're gonna fucking love that shit. Okay, we got all of our rollers and our cool shots with the camera car. We're back at the station now, this one, uh, which is our favorite station. It looks the best, has the coolest lighting, the nicest, cleanest pumps. And we're gonna film the Challenger here. Um, we're gonna try to do a wet down, where that pretty much just means to wet the entire floor for some reflections for these blue lights above and any other lights uh, that will be around. They do have a spigot here. We bought a little spigot key and we brought our hose from home to hopefully wet the ground down around where we're gonna be shooting because uh, it'll look really cool. Um, so we're gonna go talk to the people inside, let them know what's going on. Uh, they should already be aware, but uh, we're gonna try to wet down the ground. Do all of our shots of the car pulling in, the car pulling up, him pressing the buttons, uh, using like the pro blends and stuff, uh, and a bunch of other cool shots. But first of all, we're gonna go see if we could access the spigot and uh, get some water. Aha. Uh -huh. A little spigot key from Amazon. <laughs> Yeah, dog, we got the public flow. Yeah, dog, I like the public flow. <laughs> Fucking bring our home garden hose to a gas station. <laughs> and some of these reflections are ready. Oh, yeah, cool. Wet? No wet. Wet? No wet. Reflection? No reflection. Oh my god, that's kind of all I got. Keep going. That's not the first time you said that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Noe and his scat pack just ran off to go do our audio run. It is currently 2.30 exactly in the morning and we are finished up with our last shoot for the Sunoco piece. Uh, this is really cool. We filmed three different cars and three different scenarios at three different gas stations with some really cool footage. Um, we're not editing it, so we just filmed it in mind with getting a bunch of cool shots and then some rollers in between that they can make an awesome edit out of. Um, where most of the time we'll film a feature and we'll film a bunch of rollers, a cool location, that type of jazz. And within that feature, maybe one to two or three specialty shots is what I call them sometimes, or cool shots, whatever you want to call them, where you go out of your way to do more than just a roller. Whether that's standing out of the car and you're getting a 180 flyby in the middle of the road, or you're doing a head-on 180 in a tunnel, or um, you're doing a suction pump shot of a car peeling out of a dirt road. 
Um, that's pretty much all the shots that we got from the shoot are, and those are sometimes the most fun to get because um, those are the ones you get to think about creatively when you zoom in on Google Maps and you see a cool split in the road that also meets back up at the end. And you go, oh, I can make a really cool shot out of that. Um, that's the, like those little specialty shots that have just like a regular roller. Um, and that's what this whole video was. That's what all this filming was for. Um, so yeah, this was a really cool shoot. We'll put the Instagrams here of everyone that helped. Uh, obviously, shout out to them. They've stayed out from 8 p.m. to 2.30, 3.30, 4 o'clock every morning for the past four nights. Um, but uh, yeah, Sunoco, thank you guys for trusting us to make you some cool content. I'm excited to see what the edit is you guys put together. I think this video is eventually going to air on the East Coast when they get this 94 fuel over there. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully here's to some more opportunities with Sunoco and uh, making other cool videos like this. And shout out to the boys for helping these past few days. Um, obviously, it's a job so everyone's getting paid, but obviously everyone went above and beyond. So um, yeah, appreciate you guys watching this little behind the scenes vlog. Hopefully it was cool. We got to show you guys some cool footage of not just a feature, not just a car show, more of a commercial shoot with some cool lenses. And it's Texas and I can see my breath. Um, I moved away from New York to get out of the cold. It's currently 49 degrees. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoy this vlog. Hopefully you guys, I will link on Instagram and the video when it eventually comes out because this vlog will come out after that commercial airs or whatever they're using this content for. Um, so I'll put a link in the description of this video and I'll post on Instagram and all that type of jazz. So look out for that. Appreciate you guys. I'll see you all in the next one. Crispy.store for some cool merch and stickers, please. Thanks guys. There's only one fuel that can drive the performance you demand from your car. New 94 Octane, the highest octane on the market, only at Sunoco.